Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to look at a 2019 Dodge Journey. This Journey took a frontal impact and it damaged the condenser. The body shop has replaced the condenser and finished the body work and this vehicle is here to be charged. But rather than charging this with a very expensive gas such as 1234 YF, I want to use CO2. If I was to use YF gases on this vehicle, what's going to end up happening is if I charge this and I find a leak and I got to recover the charge, I'm going to lose the last 15 pounds. So all of the machines, irregardless of who the manufacturer is, it pulls down to the last 15 pounds and then it blows that into the atmosphere. That means that depending on the system size, you're going to lose between five and twenty dollars per recovery. That's very expensive. A really great strategy is to use CO2 gas instead of YF. I'm going to charge the system with inexpensive CO2 gas. I'm going to get several gains on top of just the expense part portion of this. The first gain is I'm going to be able to put 200 pounds system wide in this. If I use 1234 YF, the ambient temperature dictates the maximum pressure I can have in the low side. If it's 70 or 80 degrees, the only time, the only pressure you're going to see on the low side is up to about 80 psi. Well that's not very much. When I have no charge in the system and I put in CO2, straight CO2 gas, I charge it to 200 pounds. Now on the high and low side I have a major gain. If I wanted to build a high side with YF, I would start the car and I would let it run so I could build the higher pressure. But that also gives you a problem with turbulent air. The engine is running, the belt's moving, all the rest of it, you have air in movement. When you look for leaks, you need dead air. I don't want any engine running. You need to turn off all your fans in your shop. There can't be any fan running. Nothing can move air. I want it dead still. These are very small leaks. So when I have a higher pressure and CO2 is a smaller molecule, so more of it will come out due to the size of the molecule and the higher pressure, I'm going to have a way higher probability to find a leak in an air conditioning system opposed to any kind of refrigerant base. So basically, this is a very good strategy to use on all air conditioning systems, but especially when you're using the expense of YF. You don't want to be taking it in and out. Additionally, if you did charge it and you didn't find the leak because of a pressure isn't high enough on this system, well then the car comes back in six months and you've lost way more YF, which is even more expensive to you. So just a better way to do this is going to be to use CO2. So what we're going to do is take the bullseye and we're going to get the system charged with CO2 gas and then I'm going to show you how to find a leak if there is one. So what we want to do to start with is we want to take the evap drain. This is where the condensation from the evaporative core will run out onto the ground. Since CO2 is heavier than air, it too will fall and it runs down the same channels as the water would. That means if we plug this, what's going to happen is the CO2 is going to run down and it will accumulate in this hose and at the end of the test, if we can't find any other leakage, we want to pull this plug back out And now we want to put the probe right in that hole and if it goes off, something in the evaporative core or in that housing is leaking, so we're going to need to tear that apart to fix it. But for right now, we're just going to plug it and we'll get back to this at the end of the test. The first thing I want to do when I do any type of refrigerant detection work is I want to turn the detector on. Whether I'm using a refrigerant based detector or my CO2 detector, I want to turn it on and I want to let it warm up. If this guy is warming up, he's going to be way more accurate when I actually go to do the testing. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the high side fitting and we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into this. I want to adjust this regulator all the way to where I've got 200 pounds. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to fill the system up with CO2. So now we're filling the system with 200 psi of CO2. Now, I want to give this time. The system was empty, so we've charged it. It's got CO2 in it. These leaks are very small. And the problem is, is if I just put the charge in and I start to look at it, whether I'm using a refrigerant base or I'm using CO2, 
you're going to need time that the gas is under pressure so I get a little bit of leakage. You're leaking parts per million out of these systems many times. There is hardly anything for the detector to even sense. That also means I want to move the detector slowly around fittings and so on. If you move really rapidly, the detector doesn't have enough time to get those very small parts per million into the detector where you're going to be able to see this leakage. So move the detector a little slower. Regardless if you use a refrigerant detector or a CO2 detector, you'll have way more success. So let the, let this guy just stay at 200 pounds for maybe about five minutes and then we're going to go look for the leak. Charge the system now and it's been about five minutes. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take the bottle off. Always take the hoses off. A lot of times I go to shops and they've looked for leaks, but they've left their refrigerant recovery and charge equipment connected to the, to the caps. In this case, it's what's going to happen is that valve could leak and you'll miss it. So we want to be able to have access to these valves so we can test them. So now we're going to blow this out with some air so there's no refrigerant in here, or in this case CO2. So we don't want gas base in here because then it'll make it look like it's leaking when it's really not. So I'm going to get that blown out and then we're going to go ahead and start looking for this leak. Before you get started on your leak detection, go ahead and put the meter in high. So whether you're using a refrigerant detector or the CO2 detector, one of the first things that we want is we want it on high. These are very small leaks and you're going to need the sensitivity to find this. So I always move the detection system I'm using on high. Then one of the first things I want to do is I want to come in and I want to look at the service ports just to make sure that the service ports don't have a leak because that's a very common leak that I could have. So the service ports aren't leaking. So what we want to do now is we want to just go around the system really basic. The first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to just go around all the gaskets and connection points. CO2 is heavier than air, so it's going to fall. So usually if you're right below the fitting, it's a really good position to be, but it will, the pump will pull it up. Sometimes these fittings like this have holes in them. Always look for the hole, it'll be up towards the front. And if they have a hole, use that. It's the best place to find if a hose is leaking. to go ahead and raise the car up so I have better access to the lower hoses and the compressor. Now that we've raised the car, let's go ahead and check the lower hoses and the compressor. Okay, that hose appears to be leaking. Let's go ahead and re-zero this now. Once it's totally cleared, you only re-zero something once all of it's out.
Okay, this line right here is leaking. This fitting has a hole in it, and these holes are the best place to get your sample from. It's in front. That hose is definitely leaking. Let's go ahead and check the other end. Okay, both ends of this line right here, this low pressure line, they're both leaking. Okay, so now we know that the suction hose from the compressor, the lower one, is the hose that's leaking. It's actually leaking at both ends. We can see that because we can find the leakage around the back of the hose and through the hole. The hole is always the best place to go to find the leakage. The hose is leaking in the front of that crimp. So the gas is up there and the gas is just leaking back around the crimp and I'm picking it up back there. I can have a much better sample if I pull it out of the hole. So always try to use the holes, but sometimes you have to use around the back. Just be aware the hole's a better indication of a leak. These are really small leaks. This is not leaking very big on this car. So I want to give you a couple of words of caution. When you're doing this leak detection work, do not grab or touch anything. Don't turn or twist the hose or grab it and think you're going to make it leak worse. You might find that you temporarily seal that hose and then it leaves and you never found the leak. Now it comes back once that you have had heat and vibration applied and it's leaking again. Now it's a comeback. The best way to do these services is to don't touch anything. Move through with the detector with a logical plan. Move the detector slow. These leaks are extremely small. These aren't like evap leaks where it's a 15 thousandths hole and a whole lot of gas is coming out. These holes are much, much smaller than 15 thousandths. The area would be like point zero 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 and maybe a number or smaller. That's what we're looking for. They're so small you can't even hardly conceive how little these leaks are but they will leak over time and I'll lose volume out of the system and then you'll lose performance. So if you, you, if you just do some very logical testing steps with leak detection and you use CO2, it's just a really good way to find these real small leaks accurately and fast. You too will have good troubleshooting in your base.